If you're looking to impress some guests or just want an amazing weeknight meal, I'm gonna show you how to make the most delicious grilled pork tenderloin recipe. We're gonna make a killer salsa. It's gonna go absolutely amazing together. I promise you, you will love this recipe. I spend so much time making classic recipes and trying to make them in the most traditional way possible. They're absolutely delicious, no question, and I hope you've enjoyed them. But sometimes I like to get a little creative, have some fun, and get out of my shell a little bit, and this recipe does exactly that. It is so me. Circa 15, 20 years ago in the restaurant industry, this is exactly what I would be doing. It's incredible. I've made it a ton and people love it. So the first thing we need to do is make a marinade. So in a large bowl, I'm gonna pour in a little bit of olive oil. You can absolutely use one of your favorite oils. Perhaps it's avocado or even canola oil. Next, I'm gonna hit it with some cumin. It's gonna add some great earthy tones to this marinade. I've got a little bit of chili powder for just a tad little zip. Next, I'm gonna hit it with some crushed red pepper flakes. Gonna add a ton of peppery goodness there. Seasoning it up very well with sea salt. Then what I wanna do is whisk it completely together until it is combined, should be nice and dark. And with any marinade, what I like to do is taste it. Make sure it's good. Do I need any more spices? Do I need any more salt? Nope, I'm good to go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pull out some beautiful pork tenderloins. I've got two here. They roughly run about a pound to a pound and a quarter a piece. So two is perfect when feeding a family of four. Now in a plastic zip bag, add those pork tenderloins right in there. And you can absolutely use a plastic container or even a casserole dish here, completely up to you. Go ahead and grab that delicious marinade that we made and pour it right over top. Scoop in all of that goodness that might be on the bottom of that bowl. But this is the reason I do like the zip bag. So zip it up and then you can actually move everything around. Get those flavors incorporated. And what we're gonna do right now is add it to the fridge. And let me stop and say, while pork tenderloin is delicious and perfect for this recipe, you can also do a different cut, like a pork loin or pork chops, even a pork butt that you could slow cook and slice super thin. You could even do this with chicken or steak, heck, maybe even fish. It's super versatile and you could absolutely make it your own. Now, what we're gonna do is slice up a pineapple, but I do wanna tell you how to tell if the pineapple is ripe. Go ahead and flip it on the side, and then you see that little core at the bottom? Give it a smell. If it has a nice sweet pineapple smell, we are good to go. If it smells like nothing, it's not ripe. Go ahead and slice off both ends of the pineapple, set it up top, and then what we wanna do is come in about a half inch and slice it down. You see those little brown parts to the pineapple? I like to come right before that. That's how I know that I'm getting enough of the peeling off and then just simply turn it and slice until all the peel is gone. And because we wanna lay this on the grill, I want nice, big, thick slices while still avoiding the core. The core is no good to use here. Slice it all around, set it to the side on a sheet tray lined with parchment paper. Don't worry, we're gonna come back for it. And next, I've got a sweet onion. Simply remove each end of the onion, and then we're gonna take off that outer peeling now I've got about a medium size sweet onion. If you've got a large one, I would suggest maybe only using half. If you've got a small one, maybe you need to. Thickly slice it because again, we wanna place it on the grill and nothing worse than vegetables going through the grill grates and not being able to retrieve them. And now for some jalapenos, we are gonna slice off the end, slice it down the side. And then what I like to do is sort of break it open and crack it open. You can see all those seeds there and the pith. And to go ahead and remove those, lay it flat, and then simply slice through removing all of that, just like you see here. This is absolutely perfect. We're gonna set it onto the sheet tray with the onions and pineapple. Totally have to admit, I'm a complete weakling when it comes to spicy food, and jalapenos are super weird. You might eat one and be like, oh, that's not bad, and then take another one from that same bunch and be like, this is the hottest flipping pepper I've ever eaten. Jalapenos can be really goofy that way. So that's why I remove the pith, which are all those seeds in that inside, just to make sure that it's not too spicy for me. Now, if you love spice, heck, go up to a habanero, leave those seeds in there, do whatever you want. But for me, it's two jalapenos that are seeded. Sorry. Now what we need to do is lightly oil up all of those vegetables and fruits that we prepped up. This is gonna help to brown them up on the grill and to make sure they don't stick. You can rub them in a little bit. That's totally fine to do. I just like to make sure they're incorporated on all sides. Now heading outside to the grill in between 450 and 500 degrees Fahrenheit, we're gonna lay 
those pineapples and onions and everything we've got all out in the grill. If your grill isn't big enough, totally fine. Just do it in batches. No worries. After about three to four minutes, we're just going to give everything a little flip and cook it on the other side. You can start to see those beautiful grill marks that have formed. And once they are done cooking, they'll soften up a little bit. But a lot of caramelization is happening here and a lot of natural sugars are coming out in the onions and especially the pineapple. Go ahead and take them off. We're going back inside. Add everything right to a blender. You could also do this in a food processor if you'd like. We're going to pour in a little bit of pineapple juice. And next, we're going to hit it with the squeeze of a half lime. Going to add some nice citrus flavor there. We're going to also add in a bunch of fresh cilantro. Then we're going to season it up, of course, with a little bit of sea salt and then some fresh cracked black pepper. Go ahead and add the lid on and give it a pulse. I like to pulse it to get to that perfect consistency. I'm looking for it to be slightly chunky. Think of like a restaurant style salsa. This is absolutely excellent, my friends. Let's go ahead and take it off and set it to the side. So maybe you're wondering like, why did you cook the salsa and do that first before the pork? This recipe is all about timing. And especially when you're serving it up to guests, it's literally timing is everything, no joke. But this salsa, I know it can hold for 15 to 20 minutes and stay warm and stay delicious. The pork, I face overcooking it and slicing it and it drying out. So the salsa can hold, and yes, there is quite a bit of it. It's amazing for chip dipping. It will go with a ton of other things. You will love it. So that's why I always make extra, you know me. So now what we're gonna do with the pork is, take it right out of the refrigerator. It's been marinating for about 30 minutes. And of course, when it comes to marinating, you can absolutely go overnight for more flavor. We're going back outside to that hot grill in between 450 and 550 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna lay our pork tenderloins down and cook them for about five to six minutes per side. They are thin, they are not too thick of a cut and they will cook quickly. We're looking to get some nice grill marks on them. Be sure to close the door to your grill before and after flipping them just to make sure they cook all the way through. And then you wanna take it to maybe 135, 140, 145 max. Once it hits that point, go ahead and remove them from the grill. And now what we're going to do is simply take them off a plate, put them right on the cutting board to rest the meat nicely. And if you got any extra juice on there, my suggestion is pour it all over the top. When you rest meat, what happens are all those juices soak back into the protein. You should always rest meat for at least three to five minutes. And I was told if you ever slice meat and smoke is coming out of it, that's not a good sign. And you can also do this and you should do this with other cuts of meat like meat or beef, also chicken. It makes it way more flavorful, way more tender, and way more juicy. And you may be freaking out because I stopped cooking it at 140 degrees. At one of the restaurants I used to work at, I mean, we used to serve it up medium. Pork is so good when it's medium, medium well. I went a little bit further because my wife and my family likes medium well. Don't, don't tell them that I disagree with it. But in any event, that's where we're at. Don't think about, gosh, I need this to go past 165. It'll dry out, it'll be no good. I promise, go a little bit under, you will think. Now what we're gonna do is slice up our pork. I'm gonna do it about a half inch to three quarter inches thick. We wanna make sure they stay nice and juicy and thick. You see just a hair of pink in there. If you want to go rare in there, totally fine. Now let's plate up in slow-mo. I'm gonna set it up on this nice little live edge cutting board I've got. You could absolutely use a plate. I just love the colors of the cutting board. Next, we are gonna load up a little side bowl full of that amazing pineapple salsa. Feel free to use extra because this stuff is so good. A little side of lime and man, oh man, check out this beauty. Such a fun dish to prepare. I mean, super, super easy. You're talking maybe 30 minutes from start to finish to make this. Where else are you gonna get something this awesome? Be sure to like and share this video. Definitely subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to visit this video. I know you will love it. I'll see you on there.